Welcome to another season of So You Think You Know Westerville. If you've been following the series, you might wonder what I'm doing here. It doesn't look like a historic location. What's historic about Midas? Well, this address used to be something fun, something unique, something you just have to see for yourself. This postcard shows the beautiful Glengarry Swimming Pool, 5891 Westerville Road. Swim and water fit to drink, the advertisements used to say. Pumps completely changed 850,000 gallons of chlorinated spring water every 12 hours. But what is that in the middle? Those are diving boards. The concrete diving platform was 18 feet in diameter and had four springboards at different heights. It was in the middle because that's where the water was deepest, and the pool was deepest in the middle because the Glengarry Pool was a giant bowl 138 feet across with a surface area of about 15,000 square feet. It was nine and a half feet deep around the diving platform and gradually sloped up to two and a half feet at the edge. And can you guess when this modern looking circular pool was built? No, not the 1950s or 60s. It was 1929. And back then, this location was way out in the country. The Westerville Swimming Pool Company was incorporated in 1929, issuing $10,000 of preferred stock. On July 25, 1929, a front page headline in the public opinion read, quote, building of swimming pool is started here this week. The pool opened on September 14, 1929. The public opinion reported that 200 spectators witnessed the ceremonies in spite of cloudy skies and a north wind. The pool was christened by Helen Bailey, a high school senior elected, quote, popularity queen, specifically for the event. She swam to the diving platform with a bottle of purified water from the lab at Otterbein and poured it into the pool, dedicating it, quote, to the usefulness and happiness of the Westerville community. A few weeks later, the stock market crash began, ushering in the Great Depression. And by 1934, the Westerville Swimming Pool Company went into foreclosure. That could have been the end of Glengarry, but the pool was acquired by local business partners, Tom Dempsey, Claire Walker, and Harry Sammons. They formed Glengarry Incorporated to manage the pool and spent $2,500 on improvements their first season. Tom Dempsey must have sold his interest in the company to his partners because when Claire Walker died in March of 1938, Harry Sammons became the sole owner. In May of 1939, Sammons himself died at age 54. Ownership of the pool passed to his wife, Violanta Sammons. She ran the pool for the next 24 years until her own death, September 29, 1963. Glengarry was still in its heyday at that time, but what was it like? In the 1960s, there was free bus service from Westerville to Glengarry three times a day. But before that, kids either came with their families, rode their bikes, or hitchhiked. They stored their street clothes in locker boxes in the check room and got a metal claim tag with a matching number. Then, splash time! The pool was filled with spring water from a well, and it was always cold. The concession stand offered hot dogs, sandwiches, chips, Twinkies, candy, and more. The picnic area had lots of tables, grills, and plenty of green space. There were two kiddie pools, and across the parking lot was a miniature golf course. The staff of Red Cross certified lifeguards taught swimming lessons and lifesaving. They organized the Glengarry Gators co-ed swim and dive team and a girls' water ballet troupe. Families could easily entertain themselves all day. But apparently not everyone felt welcome. In a recent interview with museum staff, Rosalind Lawson, a 1950 graduate of Westerville High School, was asked, were there any places in Westerville that you were not comfortable going because you're black? She answered, we were restricted when I grew up. We couldn't go to the swimming pool. We could not go to the movie theater. All that remains of Glengarry Pool today is the name on this sign, and it's misspelled. But not everything here has changed. Take a good look at this building, and this one. Do you recognize them in this photo from 1972? And look, there it is, Glengarry Pool, a bright blue oasis. But in an article published July 12, 1979, the editor of the Public Opinion notes that, quote, Franklin County Commissioners recently rezoned the now-closed Glengarry Swimming Pool, throwing the land's future use up in the air. So, what happened? Although it was built for the people of Westerville, Glengarry's location and uniqueness drew people from Narva Park, Worthington, Linden, and even farther. My mother grew up in Bexley, and her father would come home from work at Buckeye Steel Castings, pile the family in the car, and drive them to Glengarry to cool off. That's my mom at Glengarry in 1954. 
but Westerville residents were certainly the main source of income for the pool. As a private company, it was not subsidized by the city, and competition for memberships increased dramatically in the 1970s. The JC's pool on Otterbein Avenue opened in 1958, added a second pool on the site five years later, and a third indoor pool in 1971. The Annhurst Neighborhood Pool opened in 1970. Highlands Park Pool opened in 1974, and made an unheard of profit in its first season. Even though Westerville's population nearly doubled in the 1970s, all that competition must have been a strain. Glengarry Pool closed for good at the end of the 1978 season. For almost 50 years, Glengarry Pool was the go-to destination for summer fun. And not just for Westerville. Its location out in the country attracted people from neighboring communities too. So the next time you drive by, imagine the smells of chlorine and grilled meat, and the sounds of kids splashing and playing swimming in a giant bowl of water that's fit to drink.